Are you wondering when you should start to lay the groundwork for monetizing your podcast? Well, in this episode, we will dive deep into exploring both how and when you should start monetizing your show. Hey everyone, welcome to Impact Podcaster Academy. My name is Alec Kasson and I help podcasters create more impact and income with their podcast without them needing to rely on getting sponsors or going viral. So if you've been following along with the various episodes that um, that I've been releasing recently, then I'd say you are at a point where you are feeling very excited and may I even say eager to dive deep into talking about monetizing your show. So for a lot of us out there, I know for for me, I generating revenue with content that we produce online, oh, it's something that's been a dream ever since the term influencer started to gain popularity. I even remember like uh, in high school, my friends and I we were uploading like YouTube videos and this was back, so I graduated high school 2013. So like it was early, like 2010-ish, we're uploading YouTube videos very early on in YouTube's career and uh, we actually started, like, I made a hundred bucks with a YouTube video before. And that was the last hundred bucks I ever saw from YouTube since then. But anyway, it's so cool to know that you can make money with the things that you make online. Um, unfortunately, though, the days of being paid for going viral, they're starting to turn into something new. And because it's turning into this new game, that means we need to understand a new set of rules. Because Gone are the days where simply having a large following meant generating a large income. You know, social media platforms everywhere, they're turning out new influencers and new viral celebrities like daily. And these are people who have millions of followers and gain hundreds of thousands of views consistently. Uh, But despite there being a rise in influencers, it doesn't necessarily mean um, that it doesn't necessarily mean that becoming one is getting any easier. You see, the influencer, it's getting more common and social media companies, they're having to pay influencers, like way more influencers now than they ever had to before in history. So this means way more competition. It means less money is going around to each person. And uh, it's getting harder, not just on one platform, but on every platform. So not only that, but there's also like this rise of something, I've been calling it like, like super influencer. I don't know if it's I think just the term celebrity is more so more accurate, but basically a super influencer, these are individuals who have passed a level of online virality within one platform, and they've also been able to gain popularity on other platforms and mediums as well. So an example of this would be someone who started out their career creating content online, and then their brand began to grow to this point where now they got recognition on multiple social media platforms, plus are on things like TV shows, commercials, uh, even movies, you know? So since these super influencers can attract millions of eyeballs and I guess like double the amount of years, no, it'd be because two eyes, two ears, but yeah, millions of eyeballs, millions of ears to their content, uh, social media companies, they're basically obligated to give these people and give these brands more resources and more finances. So you can imagine it like, you know, these social media companies, they got this pie and the super influencers, they're getting like a huge chunk of this, of this pie, which means less pie for everyone else. So those who are at this level of stardom, don't get me wrong, they certainly deserve to be compensated for their work. However, if you want to play the game of being successful online and you plan to do it by going viral, you have to recognize that you are up against massive competition, all fighting for that same slice of pie. So, you know, even if you do gain virality and influencer status, you're still competing against a slice of the pie that these super influencers are already fighting for. Uh, But fortunately, you know, there are ways to win the game without needing to play by social media's rules. And, uh, you know, you can think of these episodes that I or this show as a guide for helping you do that. So you see, there are people online, they're making massive impact, and they're making good money doing it too. All the while, they don't have to have a large following. Most of them don't. And you don't even, in fact, like, I don't even think most of them even consider themselves influencers. The way the way I've seen others do it and uh, the way that I've done it to go from making like no money online for three years to then generating $12,000 in less than six months 
was with this framework that I call the transformational journey. Um, something I could, I'll break down more in like future episodes. I've talked about it in the past as well, but uh, you know, before getting into diving, uh, diving deep into the actual tactics of like monetizing your podcast, I just want to take a moment to explore uh, whether you're ready to monetize it. And if you're w- wondering like, all right, well, when should I get started to monetize? Fortunately, the answer is right now. (laughs) You know, you thought it was going to be like, oh, well, after X, Y, and Z or something. Nope. Unfortunately, and yes, unfortunately, it's right now. And I say unfortunate because it means you got to get started. You got to get to work in this moment. So I'm a big numbers guy. I really believe that having like a clear plan with uh, clear metrics is very important before, before you begin doing the work of like leveraging uh, your podcast, even le- leveraging a site or a social media channel, something like Instagram. And uh, there's actually this ancient quote that says, I got it written down here. Uh, this quote says, don't begin until you count the cost. For those who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there was enough money to finish it. Oh, yeah, I read that one part oddly. Anyway, Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money. And then everyone would laugh at you. They would say, oh, there's the person who started that building and couldn't afford to finish it. And you can actually find that quote in uh, Luke 14, verse 28 to 30. It's a very interesting quote, right? Even though I didn't read it (laughs) properly. But anyway, like, so you got to count the cost. Early on in my journey, uh, when I was offering free consultation to podcasters, we would start to discuss their plans to monetize. And the typical response would go like this. They would be like, all right, well, my plan is to go viral. Uh, Eventually, I'll have sponsors coming to me with offers to pay me for putting their ads on my show. And then uh, the next plan is that my audience is going to start donating to just help keep the show running and make it more successful. And I don't mean to be rude here when I say this, but there's a problem with that plan. And the main issue is there's no, there's no metrics, you know, there's, there's nothing to measure. And also, pardon me, also a big issue is that they plan to monetize after going viral. You know, it'd be like, Saying you're going to monetize after you're viral is like saying, yeah, I'm going to start saving for retirement after I retire. You know, at that point, it's like it's way too late. So actually, like uh, I was explaining this during a live workshop. I explained um, this issue by using an illustration, actually. So I had told a story about a farmer. There's a farmer. They had acres of apple trees, but they didn't consider themselves like an apple tree farmer or nothing like that. In fact, um, barely any of the trees actually like produced any apples. But, you know, the farmer didn't really care for the apple trees all that much. He would occasionally take an apple here or there to enjoy on his own. Uh, But then one season came in his life, and he was desperate. He was in need of some extra money for his family. And he prayed. He was like, God, please. You know, I see I've got all these apple trees, but they don't really produce any apples. Can you please have these trees produce more apples so that I can sell them, make some extra money for my family? And uh, then what happened was like almost like a miracle. The next day, every single tree, all of them had apples on them. But what looked like a blessing, eventually, like it soon turned into a curse for this farmer. Since he had never needed to harvest so many apples, he, he was not prepared. He was literally not equipped to gather them all. And many of the apples just went bad. Even more of them didn't even get picked in the first place. And as you can see, like, even though we may want to monetize, if we're not setting up a proper plan that allows us to be ready to harvest before seeing the fruits of our labor, then we're going to miss out. So you need to understand what your long-term goal is. And this simply starts by basically just defining like what you're trying to reach. Um, Are you trying to gain more followers? You're trying to earn a certain amount of income. Like what is motivating you to move forward? And if it's to simply like have more money or have more flexibility with your schedule, you know, then I'd argue that there are many other ways um, of achieving this that are quicker, simpler than trying to grow a podcast. I'm just being honest. Uh, But many of the podcasters that I've had the pleasure of working with tell me that 
the reason why they're doing what they're doing, the reason why they started a podcast, it's more than just getting followers or more than just making money. It's more than just having a more flexible life. You know, they're actually looking to make an impact in the world and influence people's lives for the better. And, you know, that may or may not be you, but you do need to be clear with why you're, you're doing this in the first place. And if it is to make money and stuff, totally fine. But just be honest, you know, why are you on this journey? What is your ultimate target? Um, do you want to hit 10,000 followers? Do you want to hit 100,000, a million? Um, do you want to earn a specific amount of money monthly? Is it a specific number of leads or possibly uh, sales? You want to get a certain amount of sales for a product? You know, whatever it is, you need to, you got to get specific with what the goal is. And, uh, and you got to determine, you know, when, also when you're going to hit that target. And I'm not just saying like conceptually, like literally do that. What do you want to hit and when do you want to hit it? <laughs> so the next thing you need to know um, is then like why you chose that particular goal. So if it's a certain number of followers, why? If it's a certain amount of money earned each month, why? If it's a specific number of leads, why? You know, asking why you want to hit the goal and why you're on this journey, um, you know, they're, they're two different questions and it's important to know why you want to hit the goal that you set for yourself. Uh, and the reason why is that not every niche requires the same targets. So to get an idea of what targets you should aim for requires doing a little bit of research to see what other targets um, other people in your market are currently hitting. Um, and by other people, I'm not, ref I'm not referring to like that super influencer or the people with like hundreds of millions of followers. Uh, rather, trying to find like, you know, the average person in your industry. Uh, that way, you're not being misled by a few outliers. So for example, um, someone who is using a podcast to establish credibility in the business consulting world, like if someone's trying to create a podcast for people who run Fortune 500 companies, they don't need to worry about getting millions of listeners online, um, you know, because a quick Google search will show uh, that the average like download for podcasts <clears throat> that speak to like business people, it'll it'll reflect that they're not they're not getting hundreds of millions of downloads. Someone who wants to work with Fortune 500 companies, they just need to worry about who is listening. You see, the who is more important than the how many, at least like in this example, because um, there's not like a whole lot of Fortune 500 companies, which is, you know, it's a very narrow list. So sure, you know, it might not be a lot of listeners, but as long as each listener uh, is, is the right one, then this person is positioning their show in a way that can really impact the lives of others. But on the flip side, you know, if someone's running a podcast and it's about pop culture topics like, like Marvel or DC or anime, you know, they may need, they may need to hit, um, their target might be a larger following. And the reason why is because these topics, they already have large audiences to pull from, which means you're, you know, you have a greater likelihood of having a larger following. But again, you know, I'd like to mention that like hitting a certain number of followers may not be your target. Um, for example, like a specific following might be the aim because you're wanting to, your show to appeal to, to get potential sponsors and stuff like that, or to build contacts in your industry. Uh, but it, anyway, I don't want to get too, too in depth there. Cause you know, so like to kind of summarize what I just said, you need to know why you're putting yourself on this journey. And then you need to know, uh, what you're trying to hit for your target and when you're trying to hit it by lastly, you got to know why you're trying to hit that particular target. So like once you have those areas clearly defined, then you can better approach your journey um, and can see like what level of effort and what amount of resources you may need to invest in order to reach those goals. And then you can also see whether or not it's worth it. You know, sometimes it's like, oh man, I got to put in, like if you don't know how much work you got to put in and then you see how much work you got to put in, honestly, for some people, it might just be like, dang, I didn't realize it was going to be that much effort. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. And that's fine. You know, that's why it's important to ask these questions now rather than later. Because uh, we've heard of stories of people who have achieved success only to not feel successful. Or people will burn themselves out and are unable to enjoy what they worked for. Um, and, you know, going through these questions is hopefully going to help you prevent that. So if the number of followers you have to hit 
based on the average people of your industry is like 100,000, let's say, uh, then there's no need to try to burn yourself out to try to reach 1 million. You know, like a local food truck may only need 10,000 followers to be successful, as long as those 10,000 followers are people who live in the same area that that food truck delivers in. You may only need to hit $10,000 a month. You may only need to hit $500 a month to cover some monthly debts or anything like that. So, you know, sure, you know, you could aim for more if you can, uh, but it's important to be, you know, realistic. That way uh, your, your plans can be realistic as well. So in future episodes, you know, I'm probably like in the next episode, I'm thinking since we're on this topic of monetizing anyway, in the next episode, I'll provide some like formulas to help you better conceptualize what numbers you may need to hit in order to reach different financial goals. But for now, uh, you just need to know what the targets are and what you're willing to invest in order to reach those targets. So to wrap up, you know, I got some key points here I wanna emphasize. The first is that, you know, gone are the days where simply having a large following means that you can generate massive amounts of income. With influencers getting more common, this means there's way more competition, and less money for each person to receive from their like respective social media platform. Uh, however, there are people making a massive impact online, making a good amount of money, and they don't have a large following. And if we are not ready to monetize before we see virality, then we're gonna miss out. So I wanna know, what is motivating you to start this journey? Why did you start this podcast? What is your ultimate target that you wanna hit online? And when will you achieve it by? Lastly, what are you willing to invest in order to hit that goal? I'd love to hear your answers and put you in, point you in the best direction uh, however I can. And thank you so much for listening. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.